Uh, today's hearing, we're going to be focusing on the role of a diverse source of fuel for electricity generation. We frequently all hear a vocal chorus about the need for all of the above to meet our nation's demand for electricity at an affordable cost so that we can be competitive in the global marketplace, create a strong economy, and create jobs. But I, I think it's also important to be, we be realistic. And we know that there are people in the administration, that there are leader, political leaders around the country, that there are national and international environmental groups, that there are nonprofit groups and others who really do have a desire to stop the use of fossil fuel in production of electricity. Uh, just yesterday, for example, Mayor Michael Bloomberg of New York and I didn't say this, but the article said that he was gleefully writing the obituary for coal. And he was quoted as saying, it used to be said that coal is king. And regrettably, coal remains king in nations like India and China. But then he went on to say, here in the United States, I'm happy to say that the king is dead. Coal is a dead man walking. Now, the mayor says that he supports natural gas, <clears throat> but he gives millions of dollars to groups that want to uh, reduce the use of hydraulic fracturing. And of course, he made his money, and he can spend his money any way that he wants to. But I think it's important that we have a national discussion about the reality of trying to eliminate fossil fuel as a source for electricity generation. Robert Mann, <clears throat> the Sierra Club president, was quoted as saying, fossil fuels have no part in America's energy future. Coal, oil, and natural gas are poisoning us. The emergence of natural gas as a significant part of our energy mix is particularly frightening because it dangerously postpones investment in clean energy at a time when we should be doubling down on wind, solar, and energy efficiency. The EPA, without question, has established an unmistakable trend line. Coal is being taken out of the national fuel mix, and EPA is methodically establishing a regulatory framework to dramatically reduce fossil fuel use throughout the economy. EPA's regulatory framework is taking fuel choice decisions away from the private sector while it bases those decisions on a single determinant, the environment, climate change, so forth. But ignoring equally important national goals of energy security, economic growth, lower consumer cost, and electric reliability, I believe will lead to serious problems in America. In fact, we've already seen signs of it. A few days ago, there was an article, which I have a copy here, that said California is weighing how to avoid a looming electricity crisis that could be brought on by its growing reliance on wind and solar power. Even though California has a lot of plants, it does not have the right mix. Many of the solar and wind sources added in recent years have actually made the system more fragile. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the author. And then in the New York Times, electricity prices in New England have been four to eight times higher than normal as the region's reliance on natural gas for power supplies has collided with a surge in demand for heating. This is a little harbinger of things to come. The Northeast is littered with coal plants that have been retired, gas pipeline capacity is inadequate, and without nuclear power plant at Indian Point, New England would have been toast. And then we have the Energy Bill 2007 that prohibits the use of fossil fuel for providing electricity to government buildings new and modified by the year 2030. We have greenhouse gas regulations that will not allow you to build a new coal-powered plant in America if they're finalized, and now they're thinking about applying that to existing. 
So I think this hearing is a great place to have an honest discussion about the reality of trying to meet the electrical needs of America without fossil fuels, nuclear power, and those fuels that provide our baseload needs. I, for one, believe we do need all of the above. But I think that it's wrong that people in America and groups in America are trying to absolutely stop the use of fossil fuels.